Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name's Bex and today we're going to be doing a Bible with Bex video. It is quite late on Saturday. Um, I've had quite the day, um, quite a long day. I was up super early so um, bear with me for this particular video. Um, I'm getting comfy. We're going to be looking at a passage in Isaiah. Um, I'm reading Isaiah at the moment, so I'm happy to say I have made my way through Jeremiah. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and now I'm reading Isaiah, and we're going to be looking at one of the passages that I read the other day. Isaiah 12 stood out to me. It was different from all the other passages. The other passages are talking about judgments and prophecies and um, that are from God, but this is a kind of reminiscent of a psalm um, and it's called a song of praise or a song of salvation and so it really stood out to me as something different and I went through it I will show you guys I've gone through the passage I don't know if it's there we go I've gone through the passage and I broke it up into different parts and I made some different notes and I just wanted to share those with you so first things first we are going to read Isaiah chapter 12 verses 1 through to the end <laughs> okay I'm gonna grab my bible I'm really sorry if the lighting is really weird in this video um I haven't filmed this late at night and it's quite dark and the lighting is coming and going and looking funny um but you know what that is not the point of these videos so it doesn't matter as long as we're sharing the word of god <laughs> Okay, let's read from Isaiah chapter 12. So it says, Song of Praise. In that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defence. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. I love that passage and there are a few different things that stand out to me and I'm going to share those with you. So um, this time I'm not going through different translations. I just read that from NIV. So that will just give you the standpoint from where I'm coming from with this verse. That's the translation. Um, and this time I decided to look at a commentary and kind of see what it said about this passage. What is this passage about? And it said that it was a song of salvation. It talks a lot in the passage about salvation. And in the NIV Bible that I have, it's titled it Songs of Praise. But I like that it's a song of praise and salvation. He's giving praise and honour and glory to God, but it's because he's talking about the fact that he that we will have salvation and we will thank God for that salvation. And then it said here that it's signifying an end of the time that God is angry. He has turned back his face towards, um, towards them and given them salvation. And it's kind of like a time where we feel that, you know, maybe God was far from us, but now we can really tell that his face is towards us and he is with us. Because sometimes it's not that God is angry and then he punishes you, that's not the case. But sometimes we do things that push God further and further and further away out of the picture. And he's far from us because of the things that we've been putting in between us and God in our lives. And when we remove those things and we truly dedicate our lives to God, we take away those blocks. Sometimes that can be because of sin. Sometimes it's our stubborn hearts, our hardened hearts. It's because of evil, whether we've partaken in something or whether it's just the spiritual realm pushing us, trying to stop us from that relationship with Christ. And we take those blocks away from, from us. We then re-sense God. We remember that he is close to us and that actually we just put a bunch of blocks in the way and we couldn't see his face anymore. But when we take them away, we can see his face. And so he's turned towards us with comfort. And so it's like an end of that time. But this is from the Old Testament and this is where the um, Israelite nation tend to turn away from God again and again and make the same mistakes that we make again and again to forget that God is the one, the number one, the one to be praised and worshipped. 
And so this is kind of signifying that God has forgiven them again and has turned his face back towards them again and is comforting them. And it was saying in the commentary that it also echoes Moses. And so I wanted to read um, in Exodus 15 because here, this is after, so in Exodus 15, Moses is praising God for turning towards them and rescuing them from Egypt. This is just after they have escaped. And so I'm just gonna kind of quickly have a look at it. It's quite a long passage, but it echoes that same kind of um, praise and worship, that same kind of song. Let me get to Exodus 15. Okay, so it says, I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted, both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. And then it goes on, it's quite a long passage. So it's echoing, you can see here that it echoes in um, Exodus 15, what it's saying when it says in Isaiah, surely God is my salvation and I will trust in him. So God is rescuing them. God has once again turned his face towards his people and is rescuing them. He's brought salvation. And it still relates to us because God has turned his face towards us. He sent Jesus so that us sitting here today receive that same salvation. We receive God turning his face towards us and delivering us and giving us a way to have relationship with him. He is no longer just angry with us. He has given us that, um, that, that gift, that amazing gift of Jesus Christ. So... I wrote here kind of to sum up what I feel like this passage is about. It's a reason to praise, um, it's a reason to praise God because he's turned his face towards us. And I've also written that there is a call to spread the good news in Isaiah 12. And so we will get to that call later on, but I think we should go through each section now. So the first part says, in that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you are angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. It shows here the nature of God. Yes, God has his righteous anger. God will be hurt by the things that we do, but he turns back towards us and comforts us. We are sinners by nature and we will go to heaven as sinners by nature. And yet God has given us a way to go to heaven. There's no way for us to be perfect and he knows that we will mess up. But if we choose every single day to make choices that are Christ-minded, that are in a way that we can honour and give glory to God. Yes, we may make mistakes. We should never give ourselves the excuse that just because um, we will be forgiven regardless of the fact that we are sinful in nature, that doesn't mean that we can sin whenever we want. That's not how it works. But if we do our best to live for God, um, we are going to have his face turned towards us. And it just shows this gracious, comforting, loving nature. And so... The notes that I have put down here is that God sent Jesus to ultimately pay for our sins and our mess ups. And so we have so much to thank God for. Here Isaiah is praising God because although he was angry with the people of what they were doing at the time, worshipping idols that they had made with their own hands instead of the God who was ever present in front of them. And yet he still turned his face and comforted them. And for us, we have Jesus, the most amazing person ever to walk this earth, who has done the most incredible thing for us in paying for our sins. He has brung our salvation and we have so much to be thankful for. And so we can say, I will praise you, Lord, even though we have done things wrong, even though we have messed up, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. And then in the next section, it says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. You know, it's saying here, I'm saved. I no longer have to be afraid. I can trust God fully. He is my fortress, my strength and my defense. These words have power. And these are words that I... Um, speak into my life that God is my salvation, that I will trust him and not be afraid. And for me, it echoed a psalm um, that I have been trying to memorize. And that psalm is Psalm 62, 6, which says, 
truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I will not be shaken. That is something I try to speak over my life, that God is my rock. He has bought my salvation through his son, the blood of his son, and he will be my fortress and there is nothing that can shake me. And it's also echoed in what we read from Exodus, that God is the salvation, is his rock. There's nothing that can shake us. And so here, after we've praised God for bringing our salvation, turning his face towards us, showing us the goodness and the love of his um, nature, we can then say, God, you are the salvation. You've brought Jesus to me and I'm going to trust you and not be afraid. And this is the truth. There is nothing in the realms of this world that can separate us from the love of Christ. God is all powerful beyond anything that you can imagine. He is more powerful and nothing can hurt you. I can tell you that in my life I have prayed prayers in the blood of Jesus Christ and knowing that he will cover me because God cares. He is my rock. He's my salvation. He's my fortress that I can run to. He protects me. And this is what it's saying. This is such powerful words. And I encourage you to memorize this, that God is your strength and your defense. He's your salvation. You can trust in him. Let him be your rock. It will get you through so many hard times. Whether you're in a moment of fear, whether you're in a moment of doubt, whether you're in a moment of insecurity, this can hold you. And then it goes on to say something really interesting. It says, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And I was looking at this and thinking, wow, okay, we've talked about joy last week. What is joy? Being so full of joy that it's not something that you just feel, but it's something that comes out of you. So we know what we, we know where we're coming from with joy. And if you haven't seen last week's video, please do check it out and hear more about being joyful. So with jo joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Like what? Like it's so, you know, it's kind of like, what does that mean? And so I started looking up um, to do with wells, you know, what is the significance of a well? So a well is something that you obtain water from, that was in the, the definition, but it also said a plentiful supply, a plentiful, secure supply. Oh, is it not plentiful and abundant salvation? Isn't it plentiful and abundant what God gives us? Yes, he is plentiful. Our cups are overflowing and it is secure. We are 100% secure in Jesus. And so Jesus is a, a plentiful, secure supply of strength and power. And he is our salvation. We can go to him. And so it's saying with joy, you will draw, draw water from the wells of salvation. So with joy, we will, we will draw water from Jesus. He fills us. And it says... Um, in John 4:14, 4, that um, he is living water and we will never thirst again. So what he's saying here is that we can draw with joy on the everlasting, forever, plentiful and abundant and secure source that is Jesus Christ in our salvation. And now it sounds odd when you say drawing from the wells of salvation, but who is our salvation? What is our salvation? Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus and we can draw from him. He will fill us. It means that we will no longer thirst or hunger. We will no longer have to be lonely. We will no longer have um, be in um, um, distress because we can have peace in Jesus Christ. We no longer have to walk alone. He will be with us every day. So we can draw water, we can take deeply, and it will never, ever run out. The love of Jesus Christ will never run out. Your salvation can never be ripped away from you. How amazing is that? And then it goes on to say, In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. And this here is our call. When I read this, I thought about the Great Commission in Matthew 26. We're being called to um, make disciples, to baptize and to proclaim the truth that we know, the gospel, the good news. And it's saying here, proclaim. So we give praise to the Lord and we're going to proclaim his name. That is something that we should be doing, especially in this world where people do not want to proclaim and speak out about Jesus. We need to proclaim his name. And we need to make known among the nations what he has done. 
that is why I have this channel. I get to make known what Jesus is doing in my life, what he's doing in the lives of those around me, what he's doing in um, other countries. We're proclaiming his name. And when you guys share with me your faith, we're proclaiming it. We're making known what he's doing. And that is what we've been called to do, to share. And then it says, proclaim that his name is exalted. We do all things so that it brings honor and glory to God. If I do this channel and it's just for me, I'm bringing myself honor and glory. But I know that my journey and my story isn't like that. I didn't have confidence. I would never have sat in front of a camera and done this if it was off my own confidence and my own strength. It's through God and God's timing. He has encouraged me and taught me and brought me to this point in time where I've begun to preach, where I've begun to stand at the front of church, where I've begun to start this channel because he's brought me to the time in my life where I'm ready to share those things in his strength because now I know how to draw from his strength and not mine. And I've said this last time, I have problems with my speech. I have problems with being really tired and fatigued and those things would pretty much stopped somebody doing it in their own strength from doing a channel like this. When I started my channel, there are videos I can go back to. I was there with infections, I had had my wisdom teeth out, I was in pain, and I still made videos because I had something I really wanted to share with you, um, share with you guys about from the word of God or about Christ or about what he was doing. This channel isn't about me, it's to try and bring as much glory and notice to Jesus as I can. And this is what we've been asked to do, and this is what it's saying in this um, praise. We've been, we can see the beginning. We're praising God because although you are angry, your, your face has turned towards me, you've comforted me. God is there. He's given Jesus to us. He's extended that love beyond any comparison towards us. And so then we say, surely you are my salvation. I will trust in you and not be afraid. We're saying that, God, you are my all. I will look to you for everything because of what you've done for me. And with draw, joy, we can draw water from the well of salvation. So with joy, we can continue to draw from that well of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit lives in us abundantly as a gift that Jesus left behind for us on this earth to continue with that connection, that spirit connection. And we can draw so deeply from it. And then because of that, we should give praise and proclaim his name and tell people that we love Jesus. And why? Because he's done a work in our lives. I am saved not by my own rights, but because of what Jesus did for me on the cross. And every single day since then, he has worked in my life. He's worked to free me from anxiety. And he's done that in ways that bless others, not just me too. It's so amazing. And then it goes on to the end where it says, Sing to the Lord, for he has done gracious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Hasn't he done such glorious things? Even in this passage, we're being reminded of the glorious things he has done. I've been applying this to our situation. The fact that we have Jesus, God gifted his son to us. How glorious and gracious is that? But in this circumstance of where the passage was written in the Old Testament, God has been gracious and glorious and done wonderful things for the Israelites. All of their journey from Egypt up until this point, he's continued to rescue them and turn his hand towards them. And it says, let it be known to all the world. This is not just a message for the Old Testament, it's a message for us. Let it be known to all the world, all the glorious things that he has done in our lives. We can shout and sing for joy. And it says here, people of Zion, and from my uh, studies, from what I can understand, it's people who are of faith, his people, and we are his people. It, um, in the Old Testament times, those of the Israelites are his people. But through Jesus, Jew and Gentile have been brought, to, uh, brought together to be God's people. We are children of God. We get to be adopted into sonship. And it says, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. And that is God. Great is God. He is the Holy One. This psalm is full of praise and exaltation. It shows you how much God has done then in the Old Testament and now for us. God's word is amazing. It is a t it is word for then and it is a word for now and it's a word for the future. The word of God never goes out of date and that is something I want to really encourage you about. Don't just focus on the gospels or don't just think that everything you read in the Old Testament is out of date or even in the New Testament is out of date. It is not out of date. The word of God doesn't go out of date. Culture may change. Society may change and it will change more and more and more towards um, Satan's side of things. 
but God's word is not wrong, it's infallible. And so I do encourage you to read the Old Testament and to look at these kinds of things. This is a this is an Isaiah song of praise, but go through the Psalms and read them and it can be applied now too. We can thank God for what he did for the Israelites, but we can thank him for what he's doing for us too. I hope that you're encouraged and inspired to keep on reading your Bibles. We have the opportunity to share faith, to read our Bibles and to draw with joy deeply from the well. So let's do that. Let's draw deeply from the well. Let's never give up. Okay, guys, have a blessed week and I'll see you soon. Bye.